everybody. Glad y'all are back. We're grateful and thankful to God. Hopefully, you all are those that call in on the conference call, conference line. We didn't, uh, we didn't close it. We just come right back on uh, as you, as you, as you do. As you all know, we we still believe as far as the, our church is concerned. We believe in shared leadership and the like. And so, uh, Pastor Tim Johnson is going to lead us in our Sunday school today. I'm always well equipped to uh, to handle what needs to be said to us as a church. And so I'm just encouraging us to um, give our undivided attention again to the word of God. Uh, receive Pastor Johnson as he comes, please. Pastor. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's go to God in prayer and then we're going to go into our lesson for today. Dear gracious master, we thank you once more for being the great and awesome God that you are. Thank you for allowing us this time to sit at your feet to hear what you have to say to our lives, master. We know as a result of spending this time with you, we're going to be the better. We're going to be more of what you want us to be. And we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory in everything we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. This morning for your remembrance of, as a reminder and encouragement to you, our lesson this morning is going to come from Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. We're going to look at the entire chapter 3 and 6 verses from chapter 4, if time permits. Colossians 3, verse 1 through chapter 4, verse 6. It says, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate, affection, evil, concupience, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which you also walked sometime when you lived in them. But now you also put off, but now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image that created him, image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Wives, submit to your husbands, to your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. 
But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he do, had done. And there is no respect of persons. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer, watching the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. For a short, for a subject this morning, staying together while apart. Paul is our writer, and Paul is writing to a church that he never visited. Uh, he had never been there. He, one of his followers, Epaphras, Epaphras, had been there, and he had established this church. And so Paul is writing them to encourage them. This church is facing some tough times. There are people that are teaching a wrong gospel. They are teaching something that is not true and, and proclaiming that it is true. So he writes to them to encourage them to stick to what the, the apostles have taught them, what they have learned from Epaphras, and what they have heard from him by letter. And he encourages the Colossian church, not only did you, should you read this letter, but also read the letter that I've written to the Laodiceans. So now he writes them, and, and he tells them that all you need, all that you need to be uh, the Christian that you ha have proclaimed to be, all that you need to be the child of God that you are, is found in Jesus Christ. He said, because in Jesus, is all, God has created all things, and he has, in Jesus, God is also sustaining all things. So he tells us this morning that as we're going through what we're going through now, let's not forget that we can stay together while apart because we're all connected in Jesus. The first point we have this morning in our outline is we need to remember our mutual connection with Christ. Verse three, uh, chapter 3, verse 1 through 4 says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. He says the first thing that we need to remember about our mutual connection with Christ is that we are risen with Christ. He says, in the King James, it says, if ye then be risen with Christ. But that word, if, actually means therefore. He says, now, it's a matter of fact. It's not by chance or it's going to happen. It is something that has already happened. What has already happened? You have already been risen with Christ. He says, listen, when Christ died and was buried in the grave and God raised him that third day morning, he rose you up also. Listen what Colossians 2 and 12 says. He says, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised up with him, through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Just as we died with Christ, when Christ was resurrected, we were resurrected to a new life in Jesus Christ. So since we've been resurrected to a new life in Jesus Christ, Paul says, seek those things that are above. <laughs> hey, look, we got to look way beyond what's going on in this world. As children of God, we have to be thinking about and looking for what's going on in heaven. The calamities of this world don't affect what's going on in heaven. What's happening here has no effect on the praise and worship of Yahweh in heaven. So now if we are children of God, we have to have a mind that though these things are harming this world, it does not affect how we look at God. He says, seek to be looking for those things. 
He said, you know what? It's all right to watch CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC, FOX. It's all right to watch them. But the thing you ought to be looking for is what's going on in heaven. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I know there's only one place I can find what's going on in heaven, and that's in the word of God. So, so Paul is encouraging us this morning to spend less time looking at what's going on in this world and spend more time looking at what's going on in heaven. He says, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Now that sitting on the right hand of God is pretty interesting because that is the, the hand of authority. But not only is it the hand of authority, but that is the hand where he takes what God has to give for us. Now, now listen, Jesus is our Savior. He's sitting on the right hand of God making intercession for us. He's on the right hand, the hand that takes what God has for his children. So listen, it, 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 we're going through some tough times right now. But listen, your comfort and your hope has to be in knowing that Jesus is getting from God exactly what we need and distributing it to us. But we got to be looking for it. He says not only should you be looking for it, but he says set your affection. On things above, not on things on the earth. Since you have been risen with Christ, he says your mind ought to be on heaven. Because listen, your mind is what affects the rest of your feelings. What you think determines how you feel about certain things. So if you set your mind on heaven, guess what? Your feelings will be cohesive or uh, will be equal to what's going on in heaven. You see, that, that's why we so worried. That's why we so scared. It's because we're not concentrating. Our mind is not thinking about our affection, our desires are not that what's going on in heaven. Not only are we connected with, we have a mutual connection with Christ because we are risen with Christ, but we have a mutual connection with Christ because we are dead to sin. Look what verse 3 says. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. You are dead to sins. Galatians 2 and 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for himself up for me. Pastor Skinner just, just pre he just preached that Jesus was the Lamb of God who laid down his life for the sinner. Listen, we because Jesus died when he was nailed to that cross, we also was crucified with him. The sin man in us was crucified on that cross. He says you are dead. For you are dead. You are dead. Listen. You don't have to sin. Because sin in your life has been crucified. It is dead. Now I don't know about you but dead don't move. It doesn't do anything, but the key to being dead is somebody else got to do it for you. And, and I think that's the problem now. Why, why sin is not dead in our life? Because we keep moving it around. We keep taking it with us. When we are dead to sin, it's been crucified. He said, not only uh, uh, is there a connection, a uh, mutual connection with Christ is that we we're risen with Christ. We're dead to sin. But the good news is we shall appear with Christ in glory. He says, when Christ, who is our life, verse 4 of chapter 3, shall appear, and then shall you also appear with him in glory. We shall appear with Christ in glory. Listen, a lot of us know somebody has been personally affected by COVID-19. 
if they are a believer in Jesus Christ, this is good news if you are affected. Paul says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Listen, when Christ has made his second return and calls us to himself, we will appear with him because we put our faith and our trust in him. Nothing in this world can affect that. COVID-19 ain't going to stop you from appearing in the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. John said it this way in 1 John 3 and 2. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, this is good news, we will be like him. Because we will see him just as he is. We're going to be like him. I don't, I don't think we grasp what that means. You, you remember when the disciples were in the upper room and they were waiting and Jesus walks in. When the windows and the doors were shut, he says, when he appears, we're going to be like him. You know, uh, you, you, you remember when after Jesus had, 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 had given his disciples a great commission and he was getting ready to ascend back into the heaven and, and, he, and he's leaving on a cloud and his, his disciples are watching him go and two men standing in white say, why are you gazing in the sky the same way you saw him leave? He's going to come back again. Guess what? When he makes that return, we're going to come and meet him and be like him. Man, that's good news. You know what? Some mornings I wake up and ache all over. But the good news is, when he returns, I'll be like him. Remember, you, you, we are mutually connected with Christ because we are risen with Christ. We are dead to sin and we shall appear with him. Listen. This, this, let me just say this this ain't the end y'all and, and for those of you that are listening that do not believe in Jesus Christ I stopped by to tell you this morning this is not the end one day he will return and he's going to call us up in the middle of the air and we're going to be like him so if you have not put your place and trust in him, if you have not been risen with him, if you have not yet died to sin, guess what? Now's your time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now he says, remember our mutual connection with Christ. But then Paul says, rehearse the mutual conduct of Christ. Rehearse the mutual conduct of Christ. Look at uh, verse 5. He says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. He says, first thing, he says, put to death your behavioral activities from your life before Christ. Put to death your behavioral activities from your life before Christ. I know right now a lot of us are spending a lot of time alone. And it, you know how it is when you're alone, when nobody's there watching you. You pretty much think you can do whatever you want to do. And if we're not careful in our time of isolation, we will go back to what we were before Christ. 
But he tells us, Paul tells us to put to death your behavior. Listen, and you got to kill that stuff every day. Every minute, every hour, you got to put to death that old behavior you used to have before Christ. Look, look, listen, a lot of us are spending time looking at movies now. If you're not careful, those movies will remind you of some things you used to do before Christ. Paul tells us, he encourages us to put those things to death. A lot of us, are, listen, not, not only should we uh, put to death our whole behavioral activities from life before Christ, but he said, put away your mental and verbal activities from your life before Christ. Look what he says now. In, uh, in verse 8. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. And put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. He says, put away your mental and verbal activities from before your life with Christ. Listen, it is easy to be thinking about someone wrong and say something about someone wrong at a time that we are now. Have you been to Walmart lately? Two weeks ago, I was in Walmart looking for some creamer, and I, they have it stacked in a corner. I was in that corner, and before I knew it, I was surrounded. And I got nervous, and I start thinking in my mind, don't they understand what they told us? And, and, and then I start calling them out by their race. They just don't listen. But he says you need to put away the mental and verbal activities from your life before. And you know, I know we, a lot of us are playing games too now, trying to kill the time. We're playing games and, and sometimes those games get a little heated. And if we're not careful, we'll say some things to our loved ones that does not represent who we are in Christ Jesus. Listen, listen to what Paul says. Paul says, he says, verse 8, But not ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice. Those things happen in your mind. You're thinking about bad things about other people and how you can use these bad things to hurt those people. But not only do we think about it, sometimes we say it. He says, blaspheme it. Fill the communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. Not only do we think it, but we say it. Seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Well, there's neither, listen, Christ died for everyone. He says, Well, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian. Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. All of us that believe in Jesus Christ, he is for us and he's in us. It doesn't matter what your nationality is. See, See, we think COVID-19 is the only thing that's been spread all over the world. But Jesus Christ beat COVID-19. He did it way before COVID-19 did. He reached every country, every corner of the world. And we need to start acting like Jesus is all and in all. He says, not only should we put away, if we're going to rehearse the mutual conduct of Christ. That's the thing about Christ. He says, uh, I came 
that man would have life. The, the verse that everybody in the world knows, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He says, the world, everybody. There's no isolation of anyone. Everyone is included in the world. He says, now, now as, as believers, though, we need to rehearse a mutual conduct of Christ. Christ died for all, but not only should we put, put, put to death our behavior activities that, uh, from life before Christ, put away our mental and verbal activities from your life before Christ. You know, anytime you get rid of something, you need to replace it with something else. You, you discard to replace. So you're going to put away your old activities, but you need to replace them with new activities. Look, look what he says in, in verse 12. He says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so, do, so also do ye. Put on behavioral, mental, and verbal activities of Christ. He says, put on therefore as the elect, as the chosen, as the ones who God has selected. He says, put on what? Be holy and beloved. Show bowels of mercy. They're holy, separated. Beloved. Be, be able to be loved. Not only should you be able to be loved, but you ought to be showing love also. Bowels of mercy. You ought to feel sorry and pity for someone other than yourself. Amen. Kindness. Now, I, I think that's, that's one thing that is being tested more than anything right now in humanity is kindness. God has us in a position where we have to practice common kindness. Humbleness of mind. Listen, we ain't, ain't none of us better than the other. He's kind of proving that to us now. <laughs> ain't, ain't, ain't no big eyes, no little U's no more. We are pretty equal. Whether you're the president of the United States or a little baby in kindergarten, He's got them all in the same place. So he says, be humble this of mine. Don't think you more than you are. Don't think you can't get COVID-19. Right. Now let, let me say this now. There's more traffic on the freeways in the morning since we're supposed to be staying home and working safe. Humbleness of mind. Don't, don't think you can be exempt. Just because you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are not exempt. You need to be grounded in who Christ has called you to be. Meekness. Control yourself. Long suffering. Be patient with others. Forbearing one another. And those that are affected or infected or Effected, or whatever's going on with him, he says, bear with him. And that word means to actually help them to carry their load. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, forgive one another. I know the games get heated, and you say some stuff that you didn't mean to say. But as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a child of God, it is our responsibility to forgive one another because the Bible teaches us if you fail to forgive one another, guess what? My Father in heaven will not forgive you. Amen. And above all these things, verse 14, put on charity, which is the bond of perfect love. You know, love covers everything. If you really love someone, you're going to always do what's best. For others. You know, I told y'all I was in Walmart and got cornered, right? 
So I wanted to do what's best for the others. I got out the corner and I moved. I let them have their space. You have to be practicing love. And that is caring for someone else just as you care for yourself. Which is the bond of her. And listen, that's what keeps it all together. And listen. It, verse 15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Rely on God. Let him lead, guide, and guard your heart. Because he's called you to this by his body, the church. He says, and while you're relying on him, that don't make sense right now. Ain't no groceries in the grocery store. And you talking about be thankful? I can't even get a loaf of bread. And you saying be thankful? Yes, be thankful. Because that is... The behavioral, mental, and verbal activities of Christ. You remember when, when Jesus had the opportunity to feed the 5,000? Uh, he, he before he began to break the bread and break the fish, what did he do? He looked up toward him and said, Father, I thank you. The, the resources look scarce, but I thank you. The multitude is great. But I thank you. So whatever you're going through right now, he says, let the peace of God rule your heart and at the same time, you ought to be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. My question is this. If we, for some reason, we are not able to go to, through Facebook and be live and we can't do the conference call and be live, can you have church at home? Can you have church without Lee Skinner, I love it. Tim Johnson, I Stephon Skinner, oh. Sean Aguilar, oh. Chris Anderson? Oh. Can you have church by yourself? Can you sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs? <laughs> he says, and whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give anything. That, you know what? That's the key to it. If you're going to have church alone, do it in the name of Jesus. And whatever you do will be pleasing to God. It's just that simple. If you just have to read a scripture and sing a hymn and say you had church, do that. Listen, those were the behavioral, mental, and verbal activities of Christ. And we have to be rehearsing that in our personal life. We have to be rehearsing the lifestyle of Jesus Christ where we are. My last point, he says, uh, the last thing he says is to revive the mutual consideration of Christ. Luke 4 and 18, I'm going to read that for you this morning. Revive the mutual consideration of Christ. Revive the mutual consideration of Christ. Luke 4 and 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. We need to revive the mutual consideration of Christ. Luke 4 and 18, Jesus stands up and tells his purpose for coming to planet earth. He says, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He had anointed me to preach the gospel to who? The poor. 
He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the, blunt, to, to the captives, and recover of sight to the blind. He said, I liberated them that are bruised. We have to revive the mutual consideration of Christ. We have to revive, bring back to life how Christ considered others over himself. Wow, look what he said now. He, he says, it, believers have a mutual responsibility in the family. You remember when Jesus, when Jesus uh, had healed the man of the legion? And the man, after he was healed, Jesus was getting on the boat to cross back over to the other side. And that man wanted to go with him. Jesus said, look, man, you can't come because you got a responsibility to share at home. Listen, he, he, well, oh God is something, y'all. He's put us in a position where all we can do is live for him in the home. Stay at home, work safe. God is saying that's a necessity for my children to be active in the home. What, what an opportunity. Now, this is where it starts. It says husband and wives are to love and submit. Look what it says in verse 18. Hus wives, submit to yourself. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. You know what? I, I, man, I start, when this first started taking place, me and my wife had a conversation. I told her, I said, you know what? Two things are going to happen. There's going to be a lot of babies born at the end of the year. There's going to be a lot of divorces at the end of the year. And, and listen, now, I heard a report the other day that said domestic violence was up. Yeah. But, but God has given us the command for husbands and wives are to love and submit. That love means you're doing what's best for your spouse at all times. You're not gratifying yourself, but you are gratifying your spouse. Spend quality time in love with your spouse. I think the problem is a lot of us don't even know who we married. We've been apart so long on our jobs and doing our other activities that we don't have a clue who it is who we married. But guess what? God has given you an opportunity to know who you married. He says, what? as you are knowing them, love them and submit. Now that word submit is a military term. It means get in line. Get in line. Get in line. Formation. What is the formation? This is the formation. Jesus, the husband, the wife, then the children. And as husbands and wives, we need to get in line with each other. He's given us time. He's given us an opportunity. He says, wives, submit to your own husband. As it is fit, because that's what God has called you to do. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. How much should we love our wives? Paul says in Ephesians, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. What did Christ do for the church? He died for the church. So listen, husbands, he's called us to die for our wife. He gave him, he gave him, he's given himself up for his wife, the church. So that's what God is requiring of, a, of, of, of the husbands and wives. He says, love, uh, to love and to submit. He said, parents and children are to obey and encourage. Not parents obey your children. Verse 20 says, children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. I know children, I know mom and dad ain't been around. All of a sudden, they're there all the time now, and they try to tell you what to do. But the Bible says you are to obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing. Even if you don't want to make your mom and your daddy happy, you can make God happy if you just do what they say. But at 
the same time, fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Look, you ain't been home. You ain't trying to be home. But now that you are home, don't you be nagging and badgering them. You ain't never been there to tell them nothing. Now all of a sudden, you want them to do exactly what you say when you say it. But you need to spend this time encouraging them. I know it, I know it. You need, you need to spend this time encouraging them. Letting them know that you are proud of them. Letting them know that you love them. He says, uh, believers have a mutual responsibility in the workplace. Oh, this is a good one. Servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily. As to the Lord, not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Employee, employers and employees ought to work hard and be fair. Listen what he tells to the servant. He says, I know you're standing at home working right now. I know ain't nobody, no boss man there to watch you. And I know just because you click your computer on, they can see your computer's on. Yeah, don't be cleaning your house. Don't be cooking dinner. Don't be chasing the kids. Do your work as unto the Lord. Don't be watching ESPN, the soap operas, Jerry Springer, when you're supposed to be working. God has given us a test as believers in Jesus Christ. Do we obey all that he said? He says, while you're home working, work as unto the Lord. And the reason you do it, because you know that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward in the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. Listen, verse, I, I kind of skipped over verse 23, but I want to back up. He says, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily. Ask to the Lord and not unto men. Look, whatever you do, he said, you ought to be happy for what you're doing. Give it all you got in working. Because you're going to get a reward based on your stewardship. That he's given you this job and he wants you to respond as a child of God to your duties on that job. Verse 25 says, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he had done. And there is no respective person. Listen, they don't, they, when it comes time for them to know what you've done, they got a way to know. That's right. God knows. And listen, if, if you get fired and you're going to be wondering, well, how did they know I wasn't working? They might have not knew. But God knew. And he, and he passes judgment on sin. That could be your judgment, your punishment. Verse 4, say, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, he said, Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Listen, he says to the, to the employers, if you are in charge, you are in boss, you own the place, he says, be fair. Give that which is just. And I heard a, a report the other day that a company was trying to use the unemployment benefits that the other employees would get to meet their payroll. That's not fair. He says, be fair. Give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. You may not answer to nobody here, but if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you will answer to God in heaven. All right, now as we close, he says, believers, not only do we have a mutual responsibility in the family, we have a mutual responsibility in the workplace, believers have a mutual responsibility of witnessing. Look at verse, verse 2 of chapter 4 of Colossians 4 and 2. It says, continue in prayer 
and watch in the same with thanksgiving. I know we've been praying for about three weeks now. Some of us are tired of praying about COVID-19. He said, keep praying and keep watching. Be alert in your prayer. Keep praying and be alert in your prayer. Continue in prayer and watch it and do it with thanksgiving. Be thankful that God has given you an opportunity to talk to him about an issue of this world. He said, with all praying also for us, that God, verse 3, would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, which for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Listen, we ought to be in continuous in prayer that believers would take advantage of every opportunity to share the gospel. He says, with all, praying also for, Paul says, look, I'm in jail, but I still have an opportunity to share the word of God. He says, I need you praying for me that I would share at every opportunity accurately what God has said well we got a grand audience right now with Facebook people all over the world have an opportunity to see what we're doing so we need to be praying for each other that we would take every opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ accurately in this world. Listen, not, not only us on, on Facebook, but in your daily walk, in your daily law, life, you have an opportunity. And we ought to be praying for one another. That not, not that we would share, but that we would take advantage of the opportunity. Because God is presenting the opportunities. They're everywhere you go. But the problem is believers don't take advantage of them. We need to be praying for each other that we would take advantage of the opportunity. And my last thing now, he says, verse 5, walk in wisdom toward, me, toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. Why be wise? We ought to continuously be wise in contact with non believers. He says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Listen, when we come across someone that does not believe in Jesus Christ, you are, well, don't be screaming at them, you gotta believe. No, he said, Walk in wisdom. Consider them, they don't have the faith that you have. So if, if they're griping and complaining, consider them. Don't join in with them. But he says, let your words be seasoned. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Listen to what he said. He said, when you get an opportunity to talk to a non-believer, what you say ought to make them want you to talk more. They ought to want to hear from you more based on what you have said. Seasoned with salt. Now we pray now that something has been said to help you to continue to walk with Jesus Christ. We're going to close in prayer now. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are. For you still haven't changed. You're still God. And you still sit in heaven. And you still do whatever you please. And since you are still God, help us to stay together while we are apart. We may not be able to gather physically, but let our attitude, our conduct, and our speech Show that we are living by faith, trusting you in all things, representing you in a dying world. We need your Holy Spirit to guide us. We need it to guard us. We need it to sustain us. And we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory in everything we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. I worship and adore you.
just want to tell you 